everybody, I'm Faith. Welcome to my channel. For those of you that are new here, I'm the mom of a toddler, an aspiring author, and I'm fighting cancer. So as most of you know, I got out of the hospital a few days ago after I got COVID. Today I'm going to share with you the entire story from beginning to end, from the moment that I got symptoms to the moment that I was discharged from the hospital. And some things that happened were kind of disturbing. But other things were absolutely wonderful. So today you're going to get to hear it all. One of the craziest things about this illness was how quickly it came on. I was literally feeling totally fine. And I even cooked an elaborate dinner for my family. We had chicken parm with pasta and it was delicious. And I was feeling great cleaning up after dinner. Then I don't know where I realized I felt a little crappy. And I took my temperature and it was 99.8 which I know is not normal for me. So I was slightly concerned. So I decided to call my on-call doctor hotline for my oncologist since I have cancer and since I have low white blood cells and I know any time that I have an illness, I am in danger. So I called and I spoke with a nurse and she said that if my temperature went above 100.5, then I should call back and they were gonna send me to an emergency department. Okay, so literally two hours later, oh, and she told me not to take Tylenol because she didn't want anything to mask my fever. So literally two hours later, I felt even crappier. I took my temperature and it was 102. So I knew that I had to go to an emergency department. So I called the hotline back and I spoke to someone who said that they were gonna relay the message to the nurse and doctor and someone was gonna call me back but I was waiting about 15, 20 minutes for someone to call me back and my fever was still 102 and I knew they were gonna send me to an emergency department anyway. So my husband and I decided to go to our local emergency department. First, my husband called his mother. Luckily, she came over. Um, my son, Zach, who's one years old, he was already in bed, but obviously we can't leave him by himself and I wanted my husband with me. So my mother-in-law got to our house and then we left. About 20, 30 minutes since I called the on-call hotline, I didn't know if they were gonna call me back and I knew what they were gonna do was send me to the emergency department. So we just went to the closest hospital to our house, which is only like 10 minutes away. So we get to the hospital and one of those temperature scanner thing is where you stand six feet away and it takes your temperature and it shows it on the screen is there. So I stand in front of the temperature scanner and it says 98 degrees. So I'm like, this has got to be wrong. This is weird. My husband stands in front of it. It says 98 degrees. Okay. So I try again and again. Every time it just says your temperature is 98 degrees. So I mentioned to the woman at the ER desk, I have a fever, I'm pretty sure, unless it just suddenly went down. I was taking my temperature at home, it's 102, and now this temperature scanner is telling me that my temperature is 98 degrees. And she's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, it says 98 degrees for everybody. Okay, what's the point of the temperature scanner then? I guess it's just for show, I don't know. Throughout my time at the ER, I mentioned to several nurses that the temperature scanner is broken and they were like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. Disturbing. So I check into the ER and I'm sitting in the waiting room and then my phone rings and it is a nurse calling me from my cancer center. Let me explain that the cancer center that I go to it is an outpatient center. So I can't, they don't have an ER, they can't admit me there. It's not an inpatient facility. They just have oncologists and chemotherapy, they have a scanner machine there. So they have all the things that I need there, but the actual hospital that they're affiliated with is over an hour away. So I wasn't gonna travel all the way there. And I had told that to the first nurse that I spoke to. But now another nurse is calling me and she is directing me to go to a different hospital, not the one that I'm waiting in the ER. She is directing me to go to a hospital that's about a half hour away. And I'm saying to her, well, right now I am in the ER at the hospital that I'm at. And 
she started being nasty, saying that I needed to wait for them to call me back so she could direct me where to go. And now I really should be at this other hospital that's a half hour away, that they didn't expect me to go to the hospital that's an hour away, but there was another one they wanted to send me to that's a half hour away and I shouldn't be at this hospital. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm just in the waiting room. I can leave and go to this other hospital if it's so important. And she's like, well, no, now you're gonna be ER hopping. So I guess you're gonna have to stay there. And I was like, well, what's the problem? Like, why is it important that I be at this hospital that's a half hour away rather than this hospital that's only 10 minutes from my house? You know, we have a one-year-old and I'd like to be as close as possible to home so that my husband could come visit me, even though I didn't know at that point that I had COVID and no one was going to be able to visit me. But I was like, and she's literally yelling at me. I'm telling her I have 102 fever. I have cancer. I have low white blood cells. I'm nervous. I feel like crap. And she's yelling at me that next time, wait for us to call you back to direct you where to go, this and that. And I'm like, well, what's the difference? What's the problem? She says, well, that other hospital is our partner hospital so they can access your records. Now I guess I'm going to have to fax all your records over. So you're yelling at a cancer patient with a fever because you have to do your job. Wow. So when I realized the whole problem that she had with me and the whole reason she was lashing out on me was because she wanted to do less work. She wanted the sick cancer patient to drive further away from her home to a hospital in a city where it's hard to find parking and the ER would have probably been even more mobbed with people, all because of their computer systems are connected and she wouldn't have had to send my records. Wow. So we decide to stay at the hospital that we are at and the nurse that called me sends my records over. You know, I hope she didn't get a paper cut or anything. You know, it was really taxing for her to have to send my records over. So felt really, really bad about that. I hope she didn't like end up in the ER herself from like a paper cut. It's tough stuff, man, having to send records. The triage nurse sees me and they take my temperature and it is 101.7, not 98.0. And again, I mentioned that to the nurse and she's like, oh yeah, we know. Disturbing. After they see how high my fever is and my blood pressure is like 180 over 110, something ridiculously high, which was partially anxiety, partially the fever and partially the COVID. They bring me back right away to see uh, the doctor. And as soon as the ER doctor comes in, he tells me before even any test results come back, you're gonna be admitted. Because of as a cancer patient with a fever that high, there is always a risk of a bacterial infection that can turn septic and life-threatening. And viruses also can become life-threatening because as a cancer patient on chemotherapy, I have no infection-fighting cells to fight the disease. They run every test in the world. They take my pee, they take about 800 vials of blood. I'm surprised that I was able to stand up after they took all that blood. They did a they had a mobile x-ray machine that they brought in and they took an x-ray of my chest and they did the nose swab for COVID. And then me and my husband are just hanging out in the emergency room waiting for the results to come back. They bring me some Tylenol for my fever. And then a little while later, a doctor comes in and tells me that I came back positive for COVID and that they are setting up a bed for me in the isolation COVID unit. A little while later, me and my husband have to say goodbye and I'm scared and anxious and nervous that I'm gonna have to be alone in the hospital. I've never been alone in a hospital before. Um, the only time I've ever been hospitalized before was a year and a half ago after I had my son and then my husband stayed in the room with me and my son after I gave birth for a couple nights. And other than that, I've never been hospitalized. So I was pretty scared. I do have to say that the nurses were so wonderful in my unit and they made me feel so comfortable and at ease, even though they were wearing astronaut suits. So that's pretty impressive that they made me feel that comfortable while they were literally wearing oxygen tanks and tubes. When I got up there, 
I had this weird twilight zone feeling because the nurse came in with a full on hazmat suit. I have a fever. So she said everyone's poking me. I had an IV in both arms because they were putting two antibiotics in me at once. I had IVs in both arms, all these wires and hot heart monitors. I literally felt like I got abducted to aliens or I was in the twilight zone or something. It, it was weird, very strange experience. I'm sure that others who have had a first time hospital experience can relate. So I'll get to what treatments they gave me. And I am not a doctor. I am not recommending these treatments. These were treatments that the doctor recommended specifically for me based on the fact that I am a cancer patient and I also had COVID. So I don't know exactly what antibiotics I got, but I was literally getting antibiotics basically nonstop through my IV the entire time I was there. Every day they gave me a shot in the stomach of a blood thinner because of COVID increases your chance of blood clots and cancer and cancer treatment increases your chance of blood clot. So they wanted to prevent that from happening. Also giving me vitamin C, vitamin D. They were giving me all my usual medicine that I take in general, just because of I'm a cancer patient on chemotherapy. They made sure that I got all of that, of course. And then the second day that I was there, when I met the infectious disease doctor, he told me that he was recommending the monoclonal antibody treatment for me. However, the hospital administration was giving him a hard time about approving that medicine for me because I was an inpatient. It's disturbing. This is just disturbing. The doctor says I need this medication, but the higher ups were saying that I needed to be outpatient in order to get that medication. doesn't even make any sense. The infectious disease doctor literally said to me that he was possibly going to have to discharge me so I would be an outpatient so I can get the monoclonal antibody treatment and then readmit me to the hospital. And he was like, that is completely ridiculous. So I'm gonna try to get approval from the higher ups, but we might have to do that. This is disturbing. After I got the treatment and I was feeling better, I was able to look up to find out why this was happening and what this was all about. And basically the reason that he was having difficulty getting approval to get me the monoclonal antibody treatment is that the FDA and the CDC guidelines recommend this treatment for people that are outpatient and the purpose of the treatment is to avoid hospitalizations. Because this treatment is best given very early on in the disease, it isn't really helpful for people that the disease has progressed to the point that they are hospitalized. In general, however, whoever wrote these guidelines was completely forgetting about people like me who are cancer patients who are neutropenic when I arrived in the hospital, my neutrophil count was 0.2. That's right, I had 0.2 neutrophils in my body and I have a fever and they don't know if I have a bacterial infection and I have COVID. So I am being hospitalized immediately. But that does not mean that my COVID has progressed to the point that this treatment would not be effective for me. Luckily, this infectious disease doctor was phenomenal and he advocated for me and he spoke to the higher ups and they got it approved and I was able to get the treatment as an inpatient and I was the first person at that hospital to receive the monoclonal antibody treatment as an inpatient and he had to fight for it for me to get the treatment. For me, that treatment worked wonders. Within hours, I started feeling better. And before I had the treatment, my fever was going higher and higher. My head was pounding. I mean, pounding like you wouldn't even imagine. Hours after I had that treatment, my symptoms started reducing. And the next day, I felt so much better. 
So I am so thankful that I was able to get that treatment. Overall, my stay in the hospital was very good. I was very impressed with the care that I received from the nurses. When I pressed the call bell, they responded immediately, which I was surprised by because of, I've heard that's not the case in many other hospitals. I don't know if that was because I was a COVID patient and considered a high risk patient, but they were right there. They were always checking in on me. They were compassionate and caring and the food was really good too. If you guys saw my hospital vlog, when I was feeling better, I was really enjoying some of the meals there. So happy that after they saw that I was fever free for 24 hours, they let me go home. And I was so happy to come home and see my baby and my husband and get right back into my routine. But I'm going back to work at my full-time job because I was home for about a year and a half taking care of my son and you know, I need to go back to work, we need the money. I'm a writer, but that's really a hobby at this point. I'm not making any money off of that, so I have to go to work. So I was supposed to start work, but I couldn't because I was quarantining. So now I start work next week and I also have chemo next week. Because I was in the hospital, my chemo got delayed by two weeks. They said because I had COVID, I had to make sure that the COVID was completely out of my system before I could safely get chemo. So now everything is delayed by two weeks, which I'm bummed about because I have, still have three chemos left and I was really looking forward to that finish line at the end of September. And now it looks like I'm going to be going into the middle of October with chemotherapy. So it is what it is. I'm just happy that I'm okay and my family is okay. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that my son and my husband both tested positive for COVID. The day after I was admitted into the hospital, they went and got COVID tests and they both tested positive, which wasn't surprising because if I tested positive, I'm always hugging and kissing both of them. So it seemed unlikely that they wouldn't also test positive. However, my husband just had some minor cold symptoms and my son, it's hard to know if he has symptoms because he's only a year and a half. He doesn't talk yet, he only has a few words. And we took his temperature, he doesn't have a fever. Um, we don't notice any coughing. Sometimes he sneezes, but that's not too often and that happens. Um, and he can't tell us if he has a headache or you know, his throat hurts. He can't tell us that. And those of you that have been watching my channel know that after every chemotherapy, I treat myself. And now I had a chemotherapy and then I had COVID. So I thought that I deserved an extra special treat. So I bought myself a nice new purse and I'm going to show you guys right now. Here it is. Here is this beautiful purse. It's brown and black. It has different openings. Oh. My N95s in here, it's important to keep that with you. This has magnetic closure here. Um, this is real leather. The company, I believe it's called Brighton and it is just beautifully made. So let me show you up close. Get this beautiful leather and little studs, this little silver decorative piece here. And then look, it's magnetic. And then we have a zipper compartment here. The nice inside pattern. And then we have another zipper compartment here. I have my wallet in there. And there's a zipper compartment inside the zipper compartment. And it's this beautiful design and leather. And it's gonna go with almost anything. And I love it. Thank you so much for watching my channel. If you're not already subscribing, make sure to hit that subscribe button right now and I will catch you next time. Thank you for all your